Hi guys, Mr. Martin back again. I'm going to do a quick video going over why I think cardio, cardiovascular training, is a very important part of your adrenal strength training, okay? And, I, and I'm going to explain why I think you guys should have it in your program. I'll go over a few benefits of having it, and then because we're going over the benefits, that'll kind of flip itself over, and that'll also show you some of the negatives of not having it, okay? So, first point I want to make is it keeps your heart strong and healthy, okay? Your heart being strong and healthy is good for overall health, and it's good for your strength here in the weight room. It increases blood flow, and it'll keep you alive longer. The second point, it increases your work capacity, your general work capacity, and your ability to recover from training. It increases your workload over time just because you're doing more work. If your body adapts to doing more work, over time you're going to be able to handle more and more training. And that will directly help any weightlifting that you do because that allows you to do and recover from more training. Therefore, you make more gains because of it. Third point is it helps keep your body fat levels at a manageable level. If you come in here and you eat big and you lift heavy and you do all the right things to get big and strong, chances are you might put on a few pounds of fat along with the muscle that you're gaining. So if you add in a little bit of cardio training after your weights, that'll help keep your body fat levels down to a manageable level and it'll help you maintain um, a better body composition altogether. And that just means uh, the percent of muscle on your body um, compared to total body weight. And the last point I wanted to make was that it's a mental break from other training. Sometimes doing good, hard weight training can become very repetitive, and oftentimes the repetitive stuff is what actually makes the gains. So, throwing in some cardio, it could be whatever you want, really, it could be jump rope, tire flips, running, burpees, jumping jacks, anything like that can be considered cardio training. And I think it's a good break from the repetitiveness of weight training, and it allows you to go and you know have a little bit more fun with your training sometimes. Now, this is not on here, but I will go over um, what I do for my athletes that are powerlifters too. And because they're powerlifters, we have to adjust when we do cardio and we have to put it in the right uh, time in the program or else it's kind of going to throw off other aspects of the program. So in a powerlifting meet or in a, in a you know, it depends on the competition you're going, but in a competition, if cardiovascular endurance is not, a, you know, it's not relevant in the competition that you're training for, by the time you get to the competition, you should not have cardiovascular training in there. And for powerlifting, there is no cardiovascular element besides holding your breath for 10 or 15 seconds at a time. So when I'm coaching my powerlifters or my people who are just focused on strength training in the off season or, the, or very far out from test day, so competition day can also be like a test week, so a max week, that can go hand in hand. Those are essentially the same thing. Test weeks are just for people who aren't signed up for a competition. Uh, a meet day is for people who did sign up for a competition. So in your general hypertrophy phase where you're doing a lot of sets, a lot of reps. Excuse me. I apologize for that. So in the off season when we're doing a hypertrophy training, I will throw in cardiovascular training as well because that gives my guys a chance to lean down a little bit, they drop a few pounds of body weight, they, you know, if they're pretty lean to start with, they might start getting their abs back, they might get some arm veins and stuff, and when they're doing their hypertrophy training, they're increasing the amount of muscle that's also on their body. So I treat the hypertrophy phases as more of a recomposition phase, so they start building some muscle, and they start losing a little bit of body fat, even if they stay at the same body weight on the scale, if they're leaning out, at the same body weight, they're, that means they're putting on muscle and losing a little bit of fat at the same time. And as a more beginner intermediate athlete, that's a little bit easier to do. Excuse me once again. As you get more advanced, that's a little tougher to do. You have to dedicate special periods of time to doing each one. But because we're in a general phase and we're far away from the meat, you're allowed to have more variation in your training. And variation means anything that is not what you're going to do in the competition. So if you're a track athlete, and you compete in the 100 meter sprint. Doing anything other than the 100 meter sprint is a form of variation. Doing a 200 meter sprint would be a form of variation. Doing a mile run, that's variation. And the farther away from the competition that you are, the more variation you can afford to have in your training and the more it'll benefit you. As you get closer and closer to the meet, your specificity needs to go up 
And specificity means how specific your training is to what you're trying to get good at. And when specificity goes up, variation goes down. Those two go hand in hand like that. So as variation goes up, specificity goes down. And then as specificity goes up, variation goes down, okay? As we get closer and closer to the competition, generally I program in 12 or 16 week blocks for, or 12 or 16 week training cycles for the guys that I coach. So in the first four to eight weeks, we'll have some form of cardio training in so their heart stays healthy, they can you know slim down a little bit if they really want to, and it helps them do more work overall because their body's having to adapt to doing more work in general. Once we get into more strength-oriented blocks where we're gonna make most of our progress, that's why I start toning back the cardiovascular training a little bit because our focus needs to shift more towards what they really want to be good at, which in most of the people I coach coach's case is being good at the squat bench and deadlift or just being strong in general. As we go from a strength block and we go to our actual meat prep stuff where we're peaking and we're refining our neural abilities, that's where I cut out all the cardiovascular training and we focus specifically on what we want to be good at. So cardio belongs in the off season or far away from a competition, okay? That's why I believe it belongs and these are the reasons why I think it belongs there. So yeah, that's about it. So thank you guys for tuning in. I hope this was an informative video. I have a list of principles that I'm going to go over in a minute for another video. So stay tuned for that. Have a good day.